begin recording. Thank you. So hello to all joining our call today. My name is Laura Lees, and I serve on the Alpha Catholic team here in the United States. And in a few moments, I'm going to introduce you to my colleagues who will be here on this, uh, this webinar today. This is our first webinar of the Administrative Forum uh, section here in the year 2018. So we're thrilled to have you. Just a reminder, friends, the Administrative Forum, the target audience are people who are already up and running Alpha or are planning to run it, and we're trying to help you go a little deeper. So we are thrilled to have you, whether that's you or you're still discerning if you're even going to run Alpha in your setting in your Catholic parish or wherever you're looking at running it. Uh, you're all welcome here. Uh, also a reminder, as Suzanne has already put in the chat box, we are recording this call. And a copy of that recording, all the slides you're about to see, and all the links we're about to promise in the next 60 minutes, that will all be on the follow-up email that Suzanne will send to you either later today or tomorrow. Uh, so you have access to all that. What we want you to know, friends, is that we here at Alpha are here to support you in your local setting to have a fantastic Alpha experience. So uh, whether you want to respond to that email and let us know how we can support you specifically or through any of the links on our website, we're thrilled to hear from you. So Suzanne will be advancing the slides for us. And as you can see here at Alpha, it's all about working together in a team or community. And so again, the people who we are really targeting on this call are those who are leading Alpha at your, your parish or other setting. Uh, maybe you're the Alpha administrator, you might be a host or helper, and you're, you're welcome to be here too. Uh, you might be the deacon or pastor or priest at your parish or other staff member, and we're thrilled to have all of you. And also, this email we're going to send you with this recording, you could also, of course, forward to anyone else in your parish or anyone in your community or colleagues you think might be interested in what they're going to learn today. So, Suzanne, our next slide, if you please. And uh, this one is about, these are the best practices we talk about here at Alpha when we have all this amazing training. And if you don't know where the training is on our website, we will include a link on the follow-up email. But really throughout that training, and then in particular, what we really focus on are these core elements about how to have a fantastic Alpha. So you will have seen these webinars kind of following this pattern. We're kind of mixing it up a bit this year. We're going to be having some conversations with some other ministry partners, which we're really excited about. Uh, but these topics are always going to be core. And every time we record a webinar, we keep that on our YouTube channel for the next 12 months. So these uh, topics, friends, you can be finding on, those, uh, on that website at any time. So again, the core elements here at Alpha are always prayer, undergirds everything we do. Uh, being fantastic listening leaders, positioning Alpha in an evangelistic way, uh, following the curriculum or the recipe, as we like to say. They've got to do the team training. Uh, the weekend or day away is essential to Alpha. And of course, over all of it is radical hospitality for our guests, as well as how we treat one another on the leadership team. So just a reminder what uh, these administrator forum webinars are really about. And the next slide. Thank you, Suzanne. So I mentioned a moment ago, and I'm going to have my new colleague, Joe, uh, unmute and open his video. So we are so excited. You know, we've been doing these webinars for about two years already, which is amazing. And we like to mix it up for our own sake, I'm sure as well for yours. So uh, my new friend hails from Portland, Oregon, where it's, it's a bit early. I'm here in central uh, time zone in Chicago. We've got people on the call, whether live or listen to the recording, really from around the world, as well as our friends, both within or outside the Catholic Church. It's wonderful, uh, the body of Christ we get to enjoy as part of Alpha. So my new friend, Joe, uh, hails from the West Coast. And Joe, we'd just love to hear about who you are, <laughs> how you came to work at the YMCA, yeah. and then um, I'll take it back for a minute, and then we'll hear about why we've been hearing about that today. So, Joe, who are you? Uh, awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. And that is uh, that question of who am I is one that I've honestly been trying to answer for the past uh, 38 years. Um, <laughs> no, um, so, I, uh, like Laura said, I live here uh, on the West Coast, um, live 
not too far away from Portland, Oregon on the Washington state side and um, someone who, um, yeah, uh, so much about me involves my family life. I'm, um, you know, had the opportunity to be married to my incredible wife for uh, 15 years. We'll be celebrating 15 years of marriage this August. And uh, we have a, an incredible, incredible daughter who is turning one on Saturday. So we get to, uh, we're, yeah, so excited about being able to celebrate her. But um, someone who just really, um, when I was in high school, God got a hold of my heart to start following him. And from there, got a hold of my heart to be involved in ministry of one way or another. And that led me to be involved in, in primarily youth ministry for, uh, for a while. And um, then there's God just kind of started stirring in my heart, um, maybe that there's something outside of youth ministry that I should be considering. And at that time, this position uh, within the U.S. Mission Network opened up to get alpha groups going in the YMCA uh, all across the nation. And so um, stepped into that. I just felt like that was something that God was inviting me to do. And that was affirmed by, by people in my life saying, yeah, we mm -hmm. think that it's time for you to maybe start thinking about ministry outside of uh, just the local church and outside of youth ministry and um, seeing what that could be. So I'm uh, excited to be in this uh, unique ministry and uh, just helping the kingdom of God grow all across the states. Amen. Joe, thank you so much. Yeah. And it's what we love, friends, about the body of Christ, that we are each called uniquely, positioned uniquely, and God needs all of us. And of course, you know, even like Joe and Suzanne and myself, even though we have national ministry roles, we also happen to be in local churches and parishes as well. So, you know, it's both and at all times. Yeah. But again, you know, we here at Alpha are all about supporting you guys in the local church. You are our focus. It's not about Alpha. It's about you and your local parish. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just love it. So, Joe, you know, we've all known about the YMCA all our lives. You know, yeah. we know we know the song. Um, and we know about the local, <laughs> right? We yep. teased about that yesterday. We know yeah. about the local Y facilities. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of hard not to somehow have the YMCA in our lives. How is that coming up today as we're talking about church stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's a really church good stuff. question. Yeah. So, um, so when I was, when I was entering into this role, I had no idea that the why was really interested or was a place where ministry or where spiritual conversations could happen. I just, um, when I was asked what I know about the YMCA in my interview, I said, I played basketball there on my 16th birthday and I know the song. Uh, that was pretty much what I, what I knew about the why is a place that, that people want to get healthy. Um, what I didn't know as I, as I entered into this role is that really the YMCA was birthed out of a prayer movement. Um, in the like in 1850s in London and and really at its core um, was was a Christ-centered organization and through the years you know things can happen there can be some mission drift and everything like that but within the within the why there's still a number of why leaders who are excited about seeing the YMCA is a venue where ministry can happen and where we can minister to the whole person, not just focus on the physical, but uh, the spirit and mind as well. And that's, that's part of our, that's actually our mission is to put Christian principles into practice through programs to build a healthy spirit, mind, body, and for all, a uh, mind, body for all. Um, so that's, that's what we're about. And a number of YMCA leaders a few years ago, decided that they wanted to have some sort of organization or some sort of some sort of group that that could support wise uh, across the nation as they were leaning into their christian mission and so the u.s mission network was birthed out of that ymca leaders come together pooling resources to to have some sort of support for any ymca who is excited about seeing their why be a place where ministry can can happen. And so um, through that, someone found out about the, the U.S. Mission Network and um, was, was excited about what we were doing and thought that Alpha would be a really good partnership with, with the U.S. Mission Network uh, because so much about Alpha fits so well within today's YMCA. As you can see on the screen there, um, Alpha being described as intellectually engaging. There's the there's the mind part of the spirit, mind, and body of the YMCA's mission. It's relationally inclusive. Such a large part of who the YMCA today is is we want to be known as a place that serves all. 
regardless of gender, regardless of race, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of any sort of barrier. We want to be known as an organization that is for all. And so to have a Christ-centered program that is also relationally inclusive is so attractive to the YMCA. And then it's spiritually powerful. People's lives are absolutely transformed through Alpha as, as they encounter the real Jesus and are transformed by him and, and the Holy Spirit in their life. I mean, it's the sort of thing that just fits so well within today's YMCA culture. So we mm-hmm. see two going so well together and we're excited to see if, if they, if, um, yeah, if they go as well together as we think they do. <laughs> that is so exciting, Jill. And I love to hear that, um, my mute is, I love to hear that, you know, these leaders came together and yeah. they yeah. just, you know, they were discerning together and then mm-hmm. God birthed this new extra little ministry thing that is really meant to be a support to the Y. Uh, in particular, and this is so encouraging, and I, I just kind of giggled, the 1850s in London, I don't know what the deal is, right, you know, Alpha was originally birthed in central London, yeah, yeah in the 70s, actually, so uh, it's just, there's something going on there, in that place yeah. where, you know, so much about faith has some deep roots, so yeah. it's it's quite funny, Absolutely. Um, Joe, thank you, uh, yeah. It's just, and I'm guessing Alpha is not the only tool that the Mission Network will be utilizing as well. Yeah, no, we're we're seeking yeah. other other partnerships. Really, our Great. our goal is to is to help YMC leaders see the Y as a venue um, where mm-hmm. where safe small group healing communities can take place. So Alpha mm-hmm. being a large part of that, there's a, there's another ministry called uh, Restore Ministries. That is is about um, is a is a safe small group for people to really wrestle with just internal um, internal issues mm-hmm. that they might have. We're talking to mops um, just as an opportunity for moms to come together uh, to connect and develop community. But the really beautiful thing about so many of these partnerships that we're pursuing, uh, every partnership that we're pursuing, actually, they're they're all Christ centered, and it's an opportunity mm-hmm. for for us to. Um, to meet and um, to meet the spiritual needs of people who maybe don't feel mm-hmm. comfortable coming to a church, but will come to a YMCA and are still mm-hmm. wrestling with the life life's big issues and and um, yeah. who who be open to having those conversations at a Y. Nice, yeah, I love it, Joe. I love that idea of the the Y is a venue. The Lord has yeah. provided this space, this yeah. reputation. It's literally in the neighborhood. And so how can we leverage that for the Lord? I just, yeah. I just love that image. And, you know, we here at Alpha are all about relationship, partnership, sharing wealth. We, so we love the fact you guys are also looking at working with other ministries and really how, the, how Alpha can benefit them and them, us. And, you know, I said it to you yesterday, it is one kingdom. Yeah. The yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And there's plenty of need. And how can we help each other in this one yeah. goal of bringing honor and glory to God? So. Uh, love what we're hearing here, Joe. This is exciting. And yeah, so some of the questions, guys. So here's the reminder. We want to hear from you because it's so hard. We have so many people on the call and it's all um, just, you have to type in your questions. So apologies. So the Q&A box, the chat box, and some of you guys were just great putting <laughs> questions at registration. We have them here. And you know, as always, we're going to, te- we're going to get to as many as we can, but please, if questions come up as we're talking, please put them in the boxes. So, Joe, mm-hmm. you know, you said about some people just aren't going to come to a church or a parish, mm-hmm. but they'll come to the Y. Hey, I'm already mm-hmm. going to the Y. I play basketball there on Thursday night. So what is this alpha thing? And somebody nudged mm-hmm. me to go. So maybe I'll, sit, I'll go. And so our people on the call are mostly church leaders, and we love our church leaders. And so the way we talk about it is it has left the building. So this idea, and we've got churches around the country already running alphas and pubs because, you know, this is London-based originally. So we say pubs because that's <laughs> what London people think. But, you know, say restaurants. So anyhow, you know, this can yeah. happen that we're taking a building, we're taking alphas. So the YMCA, that's new. So I think you've got a pilot already going somewhere, don't you? Yeah, so there have been a couple um, early adopters to this idea because this this idea um, has been uh, I've been in this role for a little over ten months now, and so presenting trying to present this idea to YMCA leaders um, 
the YMCA is a place where it's it's necessary to to succumb to the tyranny of the urgent because you have so many people coming in through um, your doors every day using your facilities to get in front of a YMCA leader can be a little bit difficult. But we've had a few early adopters, and so we have um, there's a YMCA in Indiana that. Um, ran their first alpha last year and uh, started their second alpha course this January. They're also going to be looking to use the merge uh, course as well to just meet mm -hmm. some of the tangible needs of the members who are there. Um, mm -hmm. We have uh, two uh, on Monday night a, uh, a alpha youth um, series kicked off. Mm -hmm. Alpha Youth Group kicked off in um, in Florida. We have a few more that are going to be starting here in the in the coming months. More traditional Alpha Film series, um, mm -hmm. using the traditional Alpha Film series, and um, we're we're really going to be looking to to use Alpha in any sort of like in any sort of variety it's offered. So Alpha Film series, Alpha Youth, uh, the Marriage Course, the Parenting Course, all of those opportunities just to, to start these conversations with, with members uh, about spiritual matters and giving them opportunity to explore, mm -hmm. to not just work on the, their physical self, but their spiritual self as well. But yeah, it's something that, so we've, we've started it going and um, we're starting to gain more and more um, I guess momentum you could say of of why mm -hmm. leaders really being open and excited about this opportunity. Excellent. So Joe, you're aware of those early adopters who was mm -hmm. who is already responding to your invitation. So yeah. if our friends are on the call and listening in, say, hey, I, I'm intrigued by this. How do I get started? Should they contact you? What's the the next step? Yeah, that's a great question. I'd say um, I. Because I love to talk, uh, I would I would love if people uh, if they started with me if they're interested in hearing from a church perspective what it's been like to run Alpha in the YMCA. Uh, we have what we call uh, not ten commandments but nine advisements for running Alpha in the Y. Just some ideas, okay. some some um, ideas of or some things to keep in mind. Uh, for when you're running alpha in a context where you don't maybe have as much control of if, say you're running it at your local church um, or your local yeah. parish. And so uh, we have just some nine things to, to keep in mind. And those are both for uh, the alpha leader and for the Y leader, because we really do see this as being a, a mutually beneficial relationship. I mean, for, mm -hmm. so for the YMCA, from the Y perspective, we're, doing our best or we're we're creating this community connection we're we're helping to foster a deeper sense of community within our local context and we're also providing a church opportunity to meet uh, to have a more neutral venue uh to to meet people where they're at and to invite people than than say the local church because again even though each one of us on here is you know loves Jesus and wants to be wants to be a part of the his local body. I think we can all admit that the church can be an intimidating venue, especially for if you don't identify as, as a follower of Jesus. But the YMCA feels so much more neutral. Um, so mm -hmm. from from the Y perspective, that's what we're doing. From from a church perspective, the opportunity to to come in and to enter into the Y and have a have a space to do that ministry, but also to to say, hey, if you give us the space, we will run this. Um, because the Y culture is a lot like church culture. People will have way too much to do and not enough time to do it. Um, so if you have, if you have an, a group who's willing to step in and say, we'll run it, will you just give us the space? Uh, there are a number of Y leaders who are excited about that opportunity. So, nice. um, so all that to say, start starting with me because I've started to foster some of those relationships with Y leaders yeah. across across the nation, and then um, and then we can go from there. Nice, Joe. That you're just singing our tune because the Catholic Church. I don't know. I don't get it. We have such large facilities, and yet we don't have enough. It's mm. amazing. It's a, it's a beautiful problem, but it is a problem. <laughs> So yeah. when you say the word space, I mean, we're just, oh, we're all on this call delighted. What, you're <laughs> going to provide a space? This is amazing. Yeah. So uh, thank you. That's encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, so a question from the original registration. Guys, reminder, put questions in the chat box. Suzanne put a question in here that was on the list. How do we then handle food if we're mm. coming from our parish and we want to run the Y and, you know, we're working along with Joe at the, at the Y and he's great and he's like, go for it. How is the food working out? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's uh, the great thing about Alpha that, that, I, that I love is the, within the Y context is the opportunity to get creative. And so this could be, there could be a number of ways you could do this. If, um, 
first off, make sure that the Y leader is, is good with, with having food. And 99 times out of 100, they're going to be okay with it. I've, I've, I've actually yet to come across a Y leader who's like, oh, food is a, food is a, uh, is a sticking point for us. We can't do that. Um, but I would say that you could do a number of things. One, if you, if you, I, you could handle it the way that you do. Uh, if you were hosting Alpha in your local parish or your local church, you could just come in a little bit early and make sure that it's ready to go, have it delivered, um, and have it set up. Uh, one of the things though that I found that is really exciting and this plays not only to something that is a is at the heart of Alpha but also at the heart of the Y is the opportunity to invite other churches in the community to partner with the ministry. So there's a that early uh, adopter in Indiana. Uh, the way they handled food was they have a church who's hosting or who's helping to facilitate Alpha, but then. Um, they also put out calls to other churches in the community to say, would you be willing to provide a meal for one of the nights here for the community, um, mm. for people who are going to be here? And then you can come share a little bit about your church, just, you know, who you are, what your services, you know, what your services are, stuff like that. And just as an invitation to people in the church, of, uh, to, to the community to say, if you're interested in coming and checking out a church, we'd love to have you. Um, but we want to provide a meal for you that, and uh, just say, we love you and we, we're, we want to bless you. So that idea of these churches, mm. so it's not just a bunch of churches, but it's the church of a community coming together saying, we want to minister to our community and churches not necessarily caring about, I'm sorry to sound crass with this, but not caring about who gets the credit, but just really saying, we want people in our community to connect with Jesus and whether that's going to be at this church or that church, as long as the church that where Christ is preached, we want them plugged in there and we will celebrate that. So you have these churches mm -hmm. who are coming together to minister to the community. That could be something else that could have that could happen. And from from the YMCA perspective, the YMCA actually has a founding verse and it's John 17, 21, uh, where Jesus is praying for his followers that we would be unified, um, that we would be one as he and the, as he and the Father are one, so that we could we could, so that <laughs> in the world will know that that he's the son of god yeah. um and yeah. so so from a why perspective if it's all of these churches coming together to minister to to the community that is something that just is so exciting and really is at the heart of who we are this idea of seeing unity within the body of christ regardless of regardless of denomination or even yeah. like Protestant Catholic leanings, just as followers yeah. of Jesus, we're coming together and saying, yeah, this is, this is about Jesus. And we, we are all part of the same family. So that's, that's an idea for, for food as well. Um, but I would say that everything that I've come, or all the leaders have come across, food isn't a problem, just as long as you find a way to, to get it brought in, or as long as you um, have it set up, it, it should be okay. Yeah, Jill, I love it. I thought we were talking about food and you're talking about unity, brother. I just, that's, that's beautiful. And I, I think you said that was a founding verse. Yeah, about yeah the founding verse John of 17, the yeah, 21. John 17, that's 21. just beautiful. We love John 17. We talk about how God really uses Alpha as a unity building yeah. foundation, really, within the church. And it's just an honoring and humbling role that we get to play. And I'm hearing that at the YMCA. So yeah. you're just, you know, we're we're just singing each other's uh, from yeah. each other's hymnals. So it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah um, more, if if I can just interject, so hopefully yeah. people are starting to see how these two go so well together, yeah. the Alpha and the Y. I mean, there's so much about each or each uh, each group that is just like, yeah, this is this is part of who we are. So yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. From the original registration, so remind me, friend, you talked about how in the 1850s started in London. So the question is, is is the Y, uh, well, is the Y with Alpha, is it associated with a church? So, and I really want to yeah. take that question also to say, when, when the original founding fathers and mothers, it, was it, was there a church piece in the beginning? I'm sorry if you already said this. Yeah, no, um, so... There, um, there wasn't, it, the why wasn't necessarily birthed out of any sort of, um, out of any sort of denomination. It was a group mm -hmm. of guys who were coming together who, um, who were wanting to follow Jesus and support one another. And, okay. and over the years, that's kind of <clears throat> what the why has been. The way it got started here 
in the States really was there was a sea captain who heard about what was happening um, in, in London and wanted to provide a safe space for, for young guys who were on the road who were working to, to give them mm. a safe space where they, were, where they would, wouldn't have the temptations where they might have if they're staying somewhere else. And so really yeah. to support and care for their souls. So, but it's never necessarily been attached with a denomination or with, with, a specific, yeah. with a specific church. The way we see Alpha connecting with, um, with the Y is not necessarily even with a, with a specific denomination. Really what we're doing is just right. trying to find uh, a local church or a, a local group that's already been meeting that would be excited about meeting people off of the off of yeah. the campus and meeting people where they're at. So it's not necessarily attached with a specific denomination, um, but right. just really, yeah. Um, and I will say also that within the Y, there can be, um, some temptation, there's always a fear for, will the why replace the local church? Of If people are like, well, I'm getting my spiritual needs met there. Why do I need to get plugged yeah. into a local church? There's, um, yeah. there's, there will always be direction within Alpha. Like it'll be, the leaders, the why leaders will be okay for, for people to get mm-hmm. plugged into a local church. And actually a number mm-hmm. of why leaders who love Jesus, who are in the YMCA recognize that the why is not meant to replace the local church, but it's meant to, yeah. they're meant to be a partner with the local church and ministering to the yeah. community. That's beautiful, Joe. And I love it, right? You know, meeting people right where they are. Yeah. They feel their need for physical fitness. This is a felt need. Yeah. And so you're already coming in and then you start learning about alpha and it just, yeah. just starts becoming yeah. part of the, the norm for them. And yeah. you were talking earlier about youth and you're running an alpha youth as one of your pilots around mm-hmm. the country. Yeah. And, you know, young people love to work out and there's really yeah. no better financial deal than the YMCA. Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it seems, it seems easy to yeah. think about. And so many of our friends on the call today really want to support the next generation. Right. This is a big issue in the yeah. church and what a great place. So this might be a way for them to, to get something started. Uh, and also Joe mentioned the marriage course and the parenting course. Mm -hmm. So Suzanne will put a link on the follow-up email about the marriage course. Um, and there's also a marriage prep course that alpha has uh, supported over the years. So there's a lot of great information about that on our website, the parenting course. We love that too. We are no longer officially supporting it with Mm -hmm. updates, but you can get that stuff through Amazon or other booksellers. And so, Joe, you let us know if you need support in getting those um, other programs going. Um, so, friends, again, reminder, questions in the Q&A or chat box. And I want to go to uh, kind of just some more general questions people have asked. And one of these, this is interesting. I know, just wonder your thoughts on this, Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a church leader already probably running Alpha, and they're asking, how do we get enough internal people at our parish on board to help run a missional Alpha? So that's mm-hmm. what you're talking about, right? This is yeah. we're going outside of the parish. We're trying to reach out yeah. to those, quote, outsiders, yeah. um, probably not showing up for mass. So any thoughts you have, my friend, about how do we help motivate the faithful to, well, one, to care, <laughs> That's a God thing, but also to go and do something. Go as the Lord, man. Yeah. So there, there are a number of things um, with that. That just from my perspective, and um, like I mentioned earlier, my I I was involved in youth ministry, so I was involved in a local church. And part of part of the challenges when I was involved in a local church is just how do you cast vision for for your members to. Uh, to get involved in in a in a ministry and get plugged in, um, and I think some of it has to do with just the idea of what is the what is the I guess what what are the heartbeats of your community? What um, mm-hmm. so realizing that for me um, it wasn't just something where I would ha- I would just tell people I could invite people to first off come along and be a part of check out what's happening. Um, and say like, hey, this is, you just come see what's happening on Wednesday nights with our students instead of me just standing up front and saying we need help um, to get people, but inviting people to come take a look. Also letting people know like as a community, this is what we're about. We're about serving and meeting the needs of the community. We're not just, um, to use a phrase that 
most popular when when I was in college. Uh, we don't want to be just a holy huddle, but we really want to take this message and share it with people who are in our community because there are people in our community who who need to hear that there is a God who loves them and and desires intimacy with them and and wants what's best for them. And and His definition of best and our definition of best might be different. But his definition of best is a whole lot better than ours and, and letting them know that there's, that there's a different way that, that they can do life. And if they're tired, Jesus' mm-hmm. invitation of come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Like just that idea of, of casting that vision of we're, we're not doing this just try and increase numbers, but really it's, it's a yeah. need that so many people in our community have. And, yeah. and something too that's really that I've seen uh, is a growing idea or is a growing epidemic. This is just, sorry for this little rabbit trail, but just that just right. people are increasingly lonely and, and needing, needing in the flesh community. Uh, I think that a lot of times, especially with the students that I worked with, it was so easy to trick, like for them to trick themselves into thinking that they had community through social media. And, mm-hmm. and as great as social media is, nothing will ever replace like in the flesh community with each other. Yeah. And so helping people to cast, like casting that vision of, of not only this is a need that people in our community have, but that we're all gifted, <laughs> like God has given each one of us gifts and talents to reach mm-hmm. out to the community to serve and that, and that even if we in our minds disqualify ourselves from being able to be used by God, that he has given us something and invites us to be a part of this ministry of reconciliation and, and to, share, mm-hmm. to share about this with people. So starting to cast that vision and then inviting people to come and check out what's going on. Now for the missional alpha, I'm, I believe that there might be some people who are part of you know, lo- the local church, the local parish, who are excited about having honest conversations with people and, and really don't want to use, uh, again, another phrase that got used a lot when I was in college, the Christianese, like um, language, but people who want to have honest dialogue with people about spiritual mm. matters and being able mm. to say alpha is a great opportunity to do that. And not only that, but we're meeting, we're not asking people to come to our church or our parish to do that. We're meeting people where they're at. So chances are those honest conversations that you might be wanting to have, you'll, there's a good chance that you'll be able to have them in this safe mutual venue, whether that's the local Y, whether that's a pub, whether that's a coffee shop, whether that's someone's house, wherever it is, that idea of alpha in a neutral location get, really does give people an opportunity to have those, like to get honest and to, and to open up. Yeah, Joe, thank you. And I'm just thinking about Jesus, right? You know, he went out to the hillside that he's, He's preaching at the uh, the seashore. I mean, he went yeah. to where the people yeah. were, yeah. that they were living there. And so this yeah. is an example of that. So we'll start yeah. them there, and then we're going to kind of try to inch them toward the church. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, you know, you used the phrase early adopter earlier. It's one of my favorites as well. And we tend to think that those who are running Alpha in the parishes really are early adopters. We're, you know, the people who are trying something that feels rather new, surely, to the Catholic world. And so you guys get this. You are already early adapters. And so here we are suggesting yet another new idea. And you yeah. tend to like these things. You're showing up on this webinar or listening to the recording. And so the idea of something new will, will get you excited. And you're the ones. You step out. And so what I'm hearing Joe say is just give it a try. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. You know, yeah. Give it, you know, find one or two others who think, yeah, let's, let's see how this might work. Let's connect with Joe. Let's connect with our local Y leader and see if God opens the doors. Yeah. Right. So again, yeah. always first discerning Lord is, I was intrigued by the topic. I'm here. Is this, are you speaking? Is, you know, and we all have limited resources and time. Is this really where God is placing us uh, in our local church? And this idea of, uh, coming together with other churches as well across denominations or maybe other Catholic parishes. I mean, that's huge. I mean, Christ is clear. He loves unity. So mm-hmm. if that is part of our motivation here, uh, it's hard to think he wouldn't want to bless something like this. So yeah. um, I'm excited. I'm ready to go do this in my way down the street. <laughs> so, uh, but I guess we got to finish the webinar first. Okay. So, um, Again, reminder, guys, any questions, please put in the Q&A or chat box. Suzanne, and we haven't seen your lovely face yet this morning, so I'm going to ask you to um, show yourself. <laughs> and if you would, thank you, my dear. You all know Suzanne, too. 
Massachusetts takes care of really everything here. If you would take us to the website, and I hope that's okay if you're able to do that, because so many of the questions, guys, um, were kind of general kind of questions, and we want to make sure that we uh, show you where to go find that kind of information. Um, I mentioned earlier, I think, the training section of the website, and it is, it is robust. So, you know, Joe, when you guys are uh, running the alphas at your local WISE um, and any of our friends on listening in from parishes, we want you to uh, be engaging with all this uh, recorded content on the website. So be sure to be pulling that up. I'm sure you all who are on this call know about it, but if we can pull it up, we want to show it to you. The other option are local training events around the country. And then there's a, a web link on our website to that as well. So Suzanne is the miracle worker that the Lord gives her all this incredible gifting. So she's bringing us to show us the training section of the website. And you got to go through Alpha Builder. That's right. You guys know this. So we just want you to register so we know who you are so we can bless you. That's really what we're about. Because you remember it's all free, right? All of the videos, all those videos Joe mentioned, the, the youth, um, the film series. I love how you call it the classic film series or something like that. <laughs> I, I laugh because, you know, it's like pretty new. So, but yeah, there's like constantly new stuff. So there's a new alpha youth series. There is a pretty new alpha film series. There are newish uh, Nikki alpha yeah. talks. So all this stuff is here. Look at this playlist. Look at, oh my gosh, this keeps changing. I can't even keep up. So training, the 101, 101 uh, there's a ton of stuff here, guys. So how do you get to this, Suzanne? You go through Alpha Builder. Yeah, just okay. if, yeah. you want to click on Alpha Builder, which is, oh, let's go back just really to show you where. So when you get to run, it's runalphausa.org, um, or if you're on the regular Alpha USA website, you just click at the top here on Alpha Builder, and you click on that. Then you, this is where you register your alpha, and we really do appreciate if you do register even every single alpha, even if you have all of your, um, even if you have everything already, your DVDs, your your supplies, everything. We do appreciate it if you register your alpha, just so we know that you're doing it, and so we can pray for you. And also, obviously, since the materials are free, it's we do have to have donors who help to pay for those. So it's really good for us to be able to show donors, okay, this many people are registering for alpha. So it's really important that you do um, use that the registration process. But you can also go to the training center, which is right up here, and then that will take you to all of the, the playlists. The section right here is just basically how to do Alpha, Alpha 101, and then creating the experience um, training just kind of helps you walk through how you're going to create that experience of welcoming and, and that radical hospitality that we talk about. And then this third training section, Ministry on Alpha, that's actually special training for the prayer ministry weekend. So your weekend day away, that's special training. And typically, when you do your Alpha, you would do these first two sections, Alpha 101 and Creating the Experience. You would do that training prior to beginning your Alpha, <clears throat> and then you would do your ministry training uh, just right before your weekend experience so that your, your team would be really uh, kind of up and ready and have that on the foremost of their minds, have that training. So I'm just going to go and click on one of these, and you can see, <clears throat> so in Alpha 101, Y Alpha, and each one of these are like three or four minutes long, so they're not that big of a deal to watch, and each one is very, very uh, important. So uh, Y Alpha, the big picture overview, kind of what, what Joe has given us, you know, just kind of a big picture and why, why we do Alpha. The four principles, um, what does an Alpha session look like, and then five common mistakes. Uh, then you, if you want, you can also preview all the resources up here. Um, you can do that as well, see all the videos. And then if you want to go back to creating the experience training, uh, tips for alpha leaders, the best ways to promote food, building your team, creating your environment, that kind of thing. Then for your prayer ministry weekend, your topics are uh, leading the prayer ministry, getting set for alpha, intentionally induce, introducing prayer. Uh, you know, we, we're really careful about mm -hmm. introducing prayer and how we introduce prayer in alpha. And then integrating worship music and then setting the stage for your great small groups. So those are your, those are your training sessions and they're all incredibly good, very incredibly valuable. Yeah. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Could you also take us to the page that shows about events where we are also running local training events about Alpha around the country. There are a limited number. Some people actually fly in for these. And so it's where we take what you see in these videos and make it live. 
Um, the benefit of that is if you can if you can swing it, that you can also meet with other church leaders who are also learning. And the big focus that day is on prayer ministry. You get to receive prayer and practice it, uh, which we as Catholics don't get a lot of practice typically uh, with praying with somebody, uh, just spontaneous prayer led by the Holy Spirit. And we kind of freak out. And so I was in a training Chicago recently, and I was with a gal who said, okay, it's my first time, Laura, doing this. I'm like, awesome. So mm -hmm. we love to do this with you guys. So it's so, on the home page. Yeah, so on the main page, you want to go all the way to the bottom and then just click on events. And it will take you to all of our event, all of our training events. So, and then if you want to expand on each one, if you're in Houston, you can click on this one and see where that training is going to be. And again, even though this is at a, at a Methodist church, that does not mean that you can't go. All of these are ecumenical, and uh, all of these will have all kinds of, um, you know, all denominations present. So that's like like both Laura and Joe and Joe said. That is absolutely the beauty of Alpha, especially it's the beauty of these trainings. We had one recently in, uh, near me, and it was amazing to watch the number of Christians come together, regardless of where they go to church, regardless of where they worship and their backgrounds. They're able to do what Jesus told us to do in John 17. So yeah, hmm. yeah. Thank you. And there are a number also in Catholic parishes around the country. Often uh, dioceses around the country will invite us in. Sometimes they'll run the Alpha training at their facility and often at a Catholic parish. So definitely check this out as well. Um, so specifically, Suzanne, thank you. If you could take us to the Catholic uh, pages oh, sure. as well so people can see all those endorsements. They all love that. Let me go so, back. Let me go back real quick, Laura. Just someone yeah. should know them how to get there. Show them how to get there. So on the main page, just go all okay. the way to the bottom. Click on Catholic. There's also a couple of other things here. There's more information about the marriage course, the prayer course, um, those kind of things down here. But um, here's the Catholic page here. We have kind yeah. of three different areas. We've got, this tells about our webinars, which you obviously know about now, uh, all of our endorsements, and then we have other resources too, specifically for Catholic parishes. So you want to check out those pages. Yeah, thank you. Those endorsements are huge. Um, and we need to know that, you know, what are our leaders saying about Alpha around the world? And there are a lot of ca uh, excuse me, cardinals uh, who have some very kind comments there as well. And there's a lot of video endorsements. Uh, so, Joe, there was a question mm -hmm. at registration. How are we able to connect with other people in the city of Detroit who will be attending the webinar? There is a YMCA there. I just love that so specifically. <laughs> Do you know of any um, activity going on in Detroit? Uh, not right now. And that's one thing that is really unique about the Y is that even though we have kind of like this global brand, for lack of better words, uh, really um, the YMCA is about local leadership. Uh, whatever a local leader is passionate about or excited about or on board with, that's going to be reflected in the local why. So, so what we've been doing is connecting with leaders who are already kind of leaning into the Christian mission component of the YMCA and, um, and starting to, to cast this vision for them. Um, so all that to say, I'm not sure if there's something going on in Detroit. That doesn't mean that there isn't a possibility, and I'm more than happy to, to reach out to Y leaders and, um, and start to gauge that level of interest there. Nice. Thanks, Joe. So, uh, again, Joe's contact information is going to be on this email. We're going to keep this guy busy. This oh, is please. good. We've got to get some job security here. Suzanne, <laughs> did you have a, a comment I, before I, I go I on to my next thing? Yeah, I just have a question, Joe, regarding that. So does that mean um, there might be a why that you would run into because of the local leadership that would not be open yes, to having yeah. Alpha? Okay. Yeah, and, and um, there, are certain, there are certain regions where, where, where we see a lot of leaders leaning in, and there are certain regions that are just where leaders as a whole don't, lead in, don't lean in. Um, but at the same time, that's where I get to be persistent and keep contacting people and finding out what's going on. And something too that's encouraging is not all leaders who are leaning in are necessarily Christian. Uh, there are a number of leaders who recognize the benefit of something like Alpha within their YMCA who, who are either seeking themselves or, or maybe are indifferent towards faith but want to host it. And there's a, there's a YMCA leader in uh, Cleveland who um, – who he himself isn't a Christian, but there's, he, he wanted Alpha at his, at his wine. They're starting with a marriage course, and then they're going to watch a traditional Alpha course from there. Wow. 
Yeah. That is amazing, Joe. So not only are we reaching out the community, but the actual staff of the Y yeah. as well. I love yeah. Oh, God, it's so creative. And we've yeah. got a groundswell of activity in Cleveland. We have a colleague there who's been looking after Elf for some years. We want to make sure you know this guy. So that's mm -hmm. fabulous. Uh, a lot of the questions that at registration uh, can totally be addressed through that training center that Suzanne walked you through. So we're going to definitely encourage you to look at that. So a question at registration was, how can the Catholic Church find cooperation in the community with other denominations to work for criminal justice reform? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So one of the things on the follow-up email, Suzanne will gear you toward our playlist of recordings of ELF administrator calls from the past. I want to say it was July that we did the call with folks uh, who are running Alpha in the local prison. We had an amazing panel. It was just, I loved it. I, I want to keep that one. I don't want it to ever go away. So maybe we can make a special note of that, Suzanne, because we kind of keep them for 12 months. Got to make room for the next one. But we'll just have to do it again. That's what we'll have to do, right? So we, you know, we all care about the, um, the prisoners. Uh, Catholic world, social justice is a big thing to us. And so I want to point out to you guys, be sure to check out that particular webinar at one of our administrator forums from July 2017 about bringing Alpha into your church, uh, excuse me, your a prison or jail setting. Uh, it, it was just beautiful. So we actually also have, and Suzanne, I'm going to push you again, if you could take us to the prison pages on our website, we have a very thriving, a thriving prison ministry here at Alpha. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, you know, of course, began in London, and our colleague Jack Holly heads this up along with an amazing team, uh, some staff, and a whole lot of volunteers. Look at those beautiful people. So we encourage you to check out these pages to see what is it about running Alpha in a prison setting and how, frankly, from our perspective, how that will help bring reform to the criminal justice mm -hmm. world. Suzanne, did you have a thought on yeah, that as well? You should know. Yeah, you can see that I have a thought, don't you? Um, yeah, I was just going to say it was very cool. That webinar was very cool because we actually had um, the leader of um, Prison Ministry Fellowship who is actually partnering with Alpha, similar to what we're doing with you, Joe, um, which is pretty cool to run Alpha in, in the prison. So that was, that was an awesome webinar. So if you have a chance to go check that one out, I will put the link in the follow-up email. Yeah, thank you so much. Joe, that might really interest you, our prison yeah. ministry and how the why, and whoo, there's so much, yeah. so much opportunity. Yeah. We're just, it will never be done, friends, right? We know <laughs> this in ministry. At some point, you know, we got to make dinner and go be with our families, but, you know, there's so much to be done in the kingdom, and God just gives me the, the focus, how to prioritize what I am to, to uh, focus on right now. We love our Jack Cowley. He's an amazing, amazing leader. I love this question, and I want to put it out there, and would love anyone who's listening live, if you want to comment about this question in the chat box, Suzanne would love your input, and um, yeah, we have, we have some priest friends who I think just so attend to this question so beautifully, so, you know, we're all about unity, we want to be together, but, you know, we have different beliefs, I mean, that's the reality of this thing, uh, about the Christian world, it's huge. So here's a beautiful question somebody wrote at registration. How do we invite people to the table yet let, uh, yet tell them that they cannot eat when they get here and they're referring to the Eucharist? Wow. It's just like you can just feel the angst in the heart of the person who wrote this. So, yeah, I would love, again, friends, have you dealt with this? Um, maybe you're running <clears throat> the day or a weekend away. And you're maybe having mass, and then you've got some people who are not, you know, not Catholic there. And how do you deal with that, Suzanne? Your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I would, I would say, um, I would say it's that's a that's a difficult situation because it is hard to um, to. Um, I would almost say no, not to even do it, not to even have them go to mass and not to even have offer the Eucharist because it, again, at Alpha we want to be welcoming. We want to be, we want it to. Um, as least uncomfortable as possible for people and they're not there yet and like we always say sometimes in the um in the explore alpha webinar we don't want to throw people into the 10 foot deep into the pool as catholics we don't want to we don't want them to just come in and then just push them into the deep end so we want to be careful and respectful of, of where they are and where the holy spirit has brought them and i just think that we need to let the holy spirit do his work 
in his time. Uh, and it might not be, it just might not be appropriate to even have to even offer that um, on the day away that those are just my thoughts. Yeah. You know, and to Suzanne, I know and friends on the call, uh, I know within our CIA, you know, there's a way that we handle that, right? Typically we, we take people out of the mass oh, right. uh, after the readings, you know, the gospel part of the mass. And then we go off and we have our classes. So I think too, I'm reminded our friend, Father Doug Grandin, this wonderful uh, priest friend of ours in the Denver area. Uh, and we had an Alpha staff retreat and we had mass. And he talked about this very topic at mass. Mm. And we had people from across denominations, a couple dozen of us in the little room at the hotel having mass. And he said, you know, how it, it breaks his heart that there's this separation and yet let's address it. This, if you will, elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, it's a tough, it's a hard topic, but I think it's, it's a loving thing to address it and to acknowledge it and, the, you know, to, to keep having conversation of how do we work through it. Now we have a lovely person writing some thoughts in the chat box here. Regarding the Thank Eucharist. You. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Great. I'm just going to read it. So in case everybody couldn't Go see ahead. it. Regarding the Eucharist, this takes some hand-holding. Thank you, Mario, for this comment mm -hmm. to explain the need for formation before receiving. Mm -hmm. Our parish invites folks to come forward for a blessing as opposed to telling them they cannot receive. Mm -hmm. Michael says, we have stopped you. offering sacraments like reconciliation during the weekend to avoid overwhelming guests. This helps non-Catholics, mm -hmm. but even Catholics, have enough time to process with prayer ministry and focus on the Holy Spirit as this is all new for most Catholics. And I think that's very mm -hmm. true. A lot of parishes I know have, um, have reconciliation available on the weekend, but they'll have it like away, like it's over in the church building or something, or it's, it, it's in a completely, so if you want to go, it's there, but there's no pressure to go. So that's another option mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and we just want to acknowledge friends for the Eucharist, for those of us who have been walking this Catholic faith for some time, man, that's it, right? That's the epitome of the faith. And for us to even have this conversation, it kind of breaks our hearts that, golly, how can we not um, be pulling people into that? And I think it's just that, that that's the heart, that, that's a missional heart right there. I, I want so much more for them. Lord, give me <laughs> the patience mm -hmm. to walk this and how much this is forming us as well as leaders. Because we're just like kind of dying inside to give it to them, but knowing we've got to do it in the right time for each of them personally. Well, and I think, I how, think, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say what Joe said a while ago about we need to let the Holy Spirit do his work in them. And he works in different time frame in all of us. And we, he may not have them at that point yet. Um, he may, they may not even be there yet. So we have to just trust that the Holy Spirit is working on them. Also, Pat put a great note in here uh, yeah. to check out conflict to communion or declaration on the way, documents of development of unity between Protestants and Catholics. So check yeah. those out. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, are we able to share a little in the sufferings of Christ as he waits? Yes. <laughs> he waits on all of us as well. Joe, at the top of the hour, you said so well that you're still trying to figure out who you are, as, as we all are, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Who, who we each are personally continues to change and grow uh, by his grace. We, you know, if we ever stand still, I mean, I would get bored. I, I get bored myself. It's like webinars. I'm getting excited. We're having some variety here. So, guys, we are nearing uh, the uh, top of the hour. Um, and as in all things alpha, we begin on time and end on time. So I want to give a chance, any last-ditch questions or comments. We love these comments about the Eucharist. Are there any other comments that you're just feeling like, oh, yeah, I think I'll say this. Please feel free to put those in the chat or Q&A box. Joe, any final comments or thoughts that have come up for you as well? Um, I, I love the opportunity to see unity within the body of Christ and to, and to trust to, for all of us to, um, to come together and say, um, Father, as, as your followers, we're going to trust you that you're at work in, in the hearts of people. And uh, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to, uh, man, how beautiful is it to be able to, to cross denominational lines and just say, let's, let's, we're going to focus on what we can agree on and, and to, bring, to bring the gospel to people around us and trust that God will do with, with his truth what he'll do with it. And um, just thank you for this opportunity to, to, to be with you and share this opportunity about 
the, the opportunity to run Alpha and the Y and um, look forward to connecting with anybody who who's interested in pursuing this further. And uh, yeah, thank you for, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And we will put Joe's contact information in the, uh, the follow-up email that you'll get later today as well. Yeah, Joe, thank you for pointing out about the unity. As I often um, like to say on any of these webinars, the, the beauty of Alpha, why is God blessing Alpha as a tool right now in this history and our time? And uh, yeah, we think it's a great tool for evangelization. You see some fruit. I trust you guys listening in see that. Uh, awesome tool for leadership development, bringing people in, first as a guest, maybe host, helper, uh, and moving into any other role, possibly with an alpha, but ideally outside of it. Let's get people out there uh, in the mission field, uh, far beyond into other ministries. Mm -hmm. But it's the unity. It's just, to me, it's the unity that it brings to the church. And now, mm -hmm. unity, uh, and we've always had partner ministries like yours, Joe, but man, just the idea that you guys, there's a shift going on in your leadership that birthed this other mission thing, and we get to be in on that in the, on the ground floor. That's exciting to us. And our other early adopter friends listening in today, I just, you know, it's so great because sometimes we can feel isolated in our local community thinking we're the only ones thinking this way. And so it's nice how God creates this little administrator uh, community. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. This yeah, Lord, can I, yeah. can I mention one And just to, for, yeah. for the sake of encouragement within that, um, so yeah. having a little bit more of a national perspective and contacting organizations like MOPS, or if you're familiar with Crew, Campus Crusade for Christ, uh, for Christ um, mm -hmm. and uh, Restore Ministries, as we're talking like, and just kind of pursuing these ideas, these are partnerships that the U.S. Mission Network is pursuing. And as we're all talking, what we're seeing is how well – our our ministries complement each other and how we can work together instead mm -hmm. of seeing ourselves as com like as competitors it's what can we do and not not just to manufacture some sort of more momentum within the ymca or anything like that but really genuinely to reach out to these communities with the gospel and reach people who who aren't or who wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable coming to church but are at a YMCA and really finding ways that we can work together. So the unity that's taking place, it, it seems like what God is doing is just really starting to stir in his people a desire to, to connect with each other and, and say, Hey, let's focus on what we can agree on. And the, the truths that we hold on to or like the, what we agree on, they're, they're a lot more powerful than the things that we yeah. disagree on. Yeah. And, and let's, yeah. focus on, let's focus on that stuff. And um, just what a powerful witness to, to people around us uh, of how God can bring people together who, for all intents and purposes, wouldn't normally connect with each other, but through, through the gospel, connect and the bond that we have through Jesus with each other is, is the most powerful yeah. bond that we could have period and yeah it's amen just, it's really Joe. Cool. preach it brother yeah exactly preach it. i love it and and think of what awesome. we can do, think of what can do if we're united if we're united yeah. together yeah. i mean yeah. we are with with the holy spirit we're unstoppable yeah. we can yeah. do a lot more together than we can yeah. do apart absolutely yeah. thank you amen. Joe. Yeah. thank you so i would love to end our call the little prayer from jesus words can never go wrong with those right out of john 17 fired by joe and this uh, mutual encouragement today so again remember friends watch for the follow-up email uh forward it on we, you know uh, connect with us we would love to hear from you so let's pray in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen jesus prays for all believers my prayer is not for them alone I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Wow. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Mm. Woo! Gospel mm. of the Lord. Praise mm. be to God. Mm. Lord, I just bless and release all of these beautiful people who have been listening in on our call today. I continue to encourage us, protect and provide in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the